So you can see on the screen now, we have a picture of Joan of Arc, and so today's topic, data fitting, is um, how you will convince the world that what you see in the data is real and mathematically uh, verifiable versus um, Joan of Arc here, who may be seeing some ghosts telling her to go wage war against whoever she waged war against, so she, she was a big um, you know, person in history. So. All that being said, I'm going to go to my MATLAB program and illustrate for you the count cells application. So we have three goals today. First, we're going to illustrate count cells. Then we're going to show you how to uh, look in a folder to find all the files in the folder and do some, uh, some surveillance of which files you have. And, we're, and then we're going to make a little movie out of that. And um, then we are going to do the, the big thing, which is fitting data. And that's really quite simple. But uh, I'm going to give you the tools to do that. And then you can apply the same uh, approach to um, whatever data you have and whatever mathematical function you have. So here I am in MATLAB. And you don't have to do anything for this. I just watch for a sec. Um, I'm going to go to my desktop, MATLAB <coughs> tutorial. And it's not this one, it's the one that I gave you, which is actually this. And it's something like cell counter. So you should all have the, the folder cell counter because I stuck it up on the course um, Dropbox. And I'm going to open this. And basically what this does, in a nutshell, to give courtesy to Shali, who provided the image. And it's going to go just like we did before. It's going to um, find the size of the image, NX, NY, and NZ will be three because it's RGB. You should recognize all this from last week. And then it's going to make the red, green, and blue images to be zeros, a new matrix that is not three levels deep, but just NX by NY big. And then it's going to stick the channels uh, of the JPEG into those images. It's going to plot them up. It's going to do some thresholding. It's going to, um, so this is a thresholding operation. And I'm just going to tell you what this is doing. We're not going to actually do it, but um, you have this file, so you can adapt this for your own uh, uh, application later, if you like. And um, basically what goes on is it finds a threshold. So it says, well, of all of those grayscale values, how can I find a threshold to separate the high values from the low values? And that uses a method called Otsu's method. And that's one of the popular thresholding methods. And then it fills in the holes. And what that means is this is image segmentation. So if it finds a segment of an image, like a cell, that is a bright value, and it has a, a dark spot in the middle, it'll fill in the holes. And then it will um, find its perimeter. And then it will uh, ultimately find the, the, the boundaries. And uh, B is the number of, of boundaries that it founds and that found. And then it's going to go through and plot the boundaries in green. So what you're going to end up seeing is little green outline around all the cells that it found. And looks like then it just plots it out. So. Here we go. Okay. Yep, so just run it, and there we go. So what you see, oops, come on. Yeah, there we go. So you see, it's a cool tool. And if it worked a little bit better, it would have, you know, this might be a false negative that it did not find. But for, for the most part, it does a pretty good job. So it's going to have some false positives, and it's going to have some false negatives. This is about 98, 95% accurate right here. And you can see it found 188 cells. So that you could see if you were, one thing that people are faced with in biology a lot is looking to see how many cells are positively stained with something, right? And so that's something that typically we pay graduate students a lot of money to sit and go through every image in a, in a huge study and count the cells. Well, you could just have MATLAB do that, but you should train the graduate student in MATLAB so that they can make a living instead of just being out of work. So anyway, that is your image for the day. And I just wanted to show you that. And this is you know, the red, green, and blue channel like we did with Joan last time. 
And now we shall launch into the fun part of today's course, which is doing stuff. So I want you all to locate the folder called data one. This should have been downloaded and it's got a bunch of pictures of me, but you don't know what's gonna happen yet because you haven't looked through them presumably, but who does not have the folder data one accessible? Thaisa, yes, you do not have it. Is there anybody else? Dr. Breslow does not have it. And does anybody have a thumb drive? If anybody has a thumb drive, kindly throw the folder data one with all of its contents onto the thumb drive and hand it to Jan and Thaisa. Oh, did you find it? Taisa just needs the, the, the folder. So I'm going to do a few steps that should be easy to catch up on. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my MATLAB and I'm going to do what I always do when I start, which is new MATLAB script. Okay, so that's right here, the little plus. And we're going to make a new script. And what we're going to do with that new script is we're going to call it movie maker movie maker dot, dot m and and just typing this commented line does not actually make it anything but I always have the top line be the name of the program so that later when I've written a million of them I can go back and look quickly to see what it is and I'm gonna do my typical clear all and close all here Okay, and then I'm going to save. It is very important to save it in the same parent folder that your data one folder is in. You doing okay? So we're gonna go ahead and save. Movie Maker, and, and, and in the save folder you see data one, okay? That implies that it's going to be saved in the same folder that data1 folder is in, right? So you have a folder, that folder contains the data1 folder. This is called the parent folder, this is called the subfolder, data1 is the subfolder. So you want to save your moviemaker.m in the same folder that your data1 folder is in, okay? So there we go, we've done that. Okay, so at this point, um, what we're going to do is say, uh, let's say, um, path name equals, and we're going to say s print f, and we're going to say single quote there, or the apostrophe, data, and then we're going to put a percent D and then we're going to close our apostrophe or quotes, single quote and then we're going to say I, I, I and then we're going to close the bracket but what we really needed was um, an I, I, I that's not defined so I'm just going to quickly put it in here I, I, I equals one and if we run this what we should see in the command window is a path name that is data1. Okay? So what we've done is we've fused some letters with a number. And the number is in the variable iii, which is 1. So this whole thing was just to make the name data1. And the reason that I um, sh went through this step is that in the future, you may put this uh, 
code into a batch processing algorithm if you have different folders of data. Like if you do a study, you work for a whole year, day one you do uh, experiment number one, experiment number two, experiment number three, you may want to keep those data in folders that are specific to the experiment. But then at the end of the year, you don't want to go back and do this one time for every data. You want to actually make a loop, say for i equals one, two, number of experiments, do all this stuff. And the stuff will be to, that's all the stuff we're about to do right now. So who did not, is not at the point where they can run it and see this output data one? One, two, three. Okay. Um, what's the problem? Justin? Do you want to help them out with the problem? Uh, yeah. So basically, it's, pr it's just a few lines. Actually, I'll help too so we can get this done. Okie dokie. So, so we've all made a path name. Now what we can do is we can say change directories to path name. Okay? So what I want everybody to do at this point, well, first type this term in right here, okay, right at the bottom. And go, this common tool that I use is called gobbledygook. Right? And I typed in a bunch of crap. Stuff for the home viewer, sorry. Um, and you need to do this if you want it to crash at a particular point. So that's kind of called a breakpoint. You can also use the breakpoints. Uh, actually, I guess the Mac version doesn't have breakpoints, but the PC version, you should see breakpoints over here. But I just use that because it's easy. Now if I run it, boom, I see this, this stuff. I had an error because it doesn't know what my gobbledygook is. Okay? So everybody should put in the gobbledygook and run it and get the error there. And then, okay, I want you to go here and I want you to say PWD. Does anybody remember the PWD password? And that tells you where you are. And you're in cell counter. Okay? So. Sorry about this. Um, where did I save this? I think that I think that y you guys may have um, done the right thing, and I may have done the wrong thing. So yeah, you're right. You guys are absolutely right. I'm sorry about that. I'm gonna be in MATLAB course. I'm gonna save it in MATLAB course, and now I'm gonna run it. And now when I type in PWD, I am in the, oops, I'm in PWD. I am MATLAB course. Right. So you're getting the right answer. Sorry about that. Ha. Uh -huh. So, if you run it, I'm doing the map out here. Let's, let's do this. Let's say that. Yes, it's a just value to my map course. Say, now when you do it, and you say, PWD, here's the map out course. Okay, I just, you had saved your full uh, uh, code in the documents folder. If you save it in the, the same folder, uh, save it, we just saved it in the MATLAB course folder. Okay, so everybody here, they typed PWD and they got MATLAB course. You're in MATLAB course or whatever folder your data is in. Data folder one. Okay, so now remove the gobbledygook. Okay. Just select it and delete. You can comment to that if you want to save your gobbledygook, but... Uh, you can always type more later. Okay, now I'm going to teach you a quick handy trick to evaluate just the line. So select just CD path name and control click it. Okay? 
Uh, on the Mac, it's control click. On the PC, it's, it's the right click. Okay? And you can just evaluate selection. If you're having problems with that, you can actually just copy the line of code right here into the command window and hit enter, okay? But evaluate selection, actually shift F7 also does it, but this is if you have a long code and you just want to evaluate one line. This is very helpful, okay? But, so you can either go evaluate selection or you can just select it, I'm going to copy it, and then I'm gonna paste it in here, and I'm gonna hit enter, and it goes. So if you execute that line of code, or alternately, you could just hit run again, and it would go through the whole thing, and now that, since you don't have your gobbledygook here, it will evaluate that last lane. Now, if you do PWD, you see you're in the subfolder, okay? So the command change directory, CD, enables you to jump which folder you're in, and that will enable you to load data. So since we have done all this stuff, we said ii equals one, we generated a name called data one, and then we changed uh, 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 directory to that path name, we now should be able to say ls, which is list, and we'll see all the contents of that folder. Okay? So just to illustrate, I'm going to cd dot dot, which is go back a folder, and I'm going to say ls, and there is all the stuff in the parent folder. But then, of course, I can go change directory to data1, okay? And I'm going to say ls, and there's all the data of the subfolder, data1, okay? And you notice that's a bunch of ridiculous pictures of, of the presenter in there. So what we're going to do now, okay, so is there anybody that has a question at this point? Jumping back and forth? Yeah, I Okay. You help Alan. So at this point, we have learned how to jump folders, right? And we put this path name in here. Oh my gosh, it's 922 already. So at this point, we're going to say pick names equals dir of star dot jpeg okay what's going on here dir is the list of the current of all the files in the current directory folder okay and this syntax is common to all coding languages i think all coding languages at least c++ is that when you put a star the star means anything right so star.jpg means anything that is a JPEG. So when you say pick names equals dir directory, all the contents of the directory, but then you have a classifier that's anything.star, that could be anything.bmp or anything.avi or anything.m would give you all the MATLAB, the names of all the MATLAB files in that folder. You'll have something called pick names. So if you just run this right now, I'm just going to make that so that it doesn't print, and run, all of a sudden, boom, you have this variable called pick names, which is 15 by 1 structured array, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make a loop that's going to go through all those pictures, okay? Okay, having problems so far? You don't see the you don't see the the pick names. Let me just check out.
tell me if you have another error because. Uh, so, so does everybody get to this place where it says pick names equals 15 by one structured array pretty much? Okay. So now what we're gonna do is make a loop that goes through each picture and graphs it, okay? So I'm gonna stop printing that out. I'm gonna say for i equals one to length of pick name, pick, okay? What's length of pick name? Length of pick name is, oops, sorry. I'll do that again. What's length of pick name? The length of pick name is, oh, pick names, sorry. For the third time is a charm. What is the length of pick names? The length of pick names is 15, yay. So this is gonna, this is gonna be a for loop that's gonna have 15 iterations, okay? So if you hit enter, notice it automatically indents you a little bit which is good. If you ever see that your loops aren't indented, please indent them because it will make life easier for yourself. So we're gonna say current pick equals imread. You may remember that from reading in the image of Joan. Pick names of I dot name. And what kind of file is it? It's a JPEG. Okay. And very important to put the semicolon after that because, or is that a colon? I don't know. The one that is not, da, da, semicolon. Alright, <laughs> thanks. So, um, current pick equals imread, and what are, which one are we going to do? We're going to do number i, because we're in a for loop with i, but we have to put dot name at the, en at the end of it because that, uh, your structured array, you see this is a structured array. Each of the 15 structures in there has a name, a date, number of bytes, is it a directory, date, not, it has a bunch of stuff. But we, we need to access the name of it and we need to access the name of number i and it's gonna be a dot jpg. Then we're going to say, figure one, we're gonna say, semicolon and CLF. What does CLF stand for? Anybody? Come on. Clear last figure, of course. <laughs> you'll, all be, you'll all be big geeks enough to know this stuff soon. It's language, the language of technical computing. CLF, and then what are we gonna do? We're gonna image SC. What are we gonna image? Current pick, of course, right? Right, because that's the one we just loaded. Okay. We're going to say axis image, which is going to just make the axes square so that if it's a rectangular picture, it doesn't distort it. Um, and then we're going to say, well, let's just for the time being say pause 0 0.2 seconds. End. Okay. And at this time, run it, and you're going to see something cute. Okay? You're going to see me winking at the camera. Okay? Yes, pretty geeky. So who does not see me winking at them? <laughs> it's a terrible, terrible thing. Okay. Can you help the top person out? All right, so if you, want, if you want to see me wink faster, you can get rid of the pause, <laughs> right? That's kind of cuter. Uh, anyway, let's keep the pause back in here. So now we're gonna, so we learned in this example how to see all of the 
files in a folder. This is important. Like if you have a camera, your iPhone for instance, and you download a thousand files into the uh, iPhone directory folder, you can use MATLAB to go into that folder and then use the same command star.jpg to quickly get a list of all the pictures in your folder. Um, you can use this with not just your iPhone photos, but you can use it for scientific data too. So what we're going to do now is we're going to learn how to make a movie out of this and save it as an AVI. That's always fun. Like what happens if you have a bunch of cells? Or what happens if you have a bunch of pictures of a nematode worm crawling and you want to put the video to music? Because it's so cool to watch it wiggle, right? And you want some music? Then you can use this to take all those pictures and make a video. That is if you don't have a video camera on the microscope. So what we're going to do is we're going to say M of I equals get frame. Okay? Get frame. Get frame is a predefined function in MATLAB. Don't worry about it. But what it does is it gets movie frames. Okay? And then afterwards, we're going to say movie to AVI, which is another func predefined function in MATLAB. Here is a bonus question. What should everyone do if you don't know how a predefined function in MATLAB works? Yes, Leah? Right, in the command window, exactly right. Who is your teacher? Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay, so we go down here and we say, help movie to AVI, and boom, there is a bunch of instructions on how to use movie to AVI. So movie to AVI, what are we going to operate on? We're going to operate on M, right, where we've got the frames. And we're going to call it something like, Dan is a geek. And then we're going to actually put dot avi after that. Okay? And now we're done. If I run this, it's going to wink at you. And then once you see it's no longer busy down here, you're going to minimize your folder, go back to where you were working, and now all of a sudden, oh, sorry, it was the other folder tutorial you see, oh, sorry about that. It is this one that I had it in, data one. That in your data one folder, you have danisageek.avi, okay? Now the bad news is that all of you people are working in Mac, you don't have the codec to view the AVI. So that is the homework for the people in Mac, is to, is to figure out how to get the, the codec in there. Um, all of you are super savvy, try and do that. But who can actually see the AVI play on their PC computer? Anybody yet? Yes, Rob, you got it? Yeah. There we go. It's, it, it, did it actually play? It works? Cool. So all of you with a PC computer can now not only <coughs> do this for the rest of your life and make cool movies out of pictures, but you can also have proof of how geeky I am. Okay, we're at 934. We've illustrated the cells, we've made a movie, and now we're going to do the coolest part of the whole course so far, which is fitting data. Okay? Is there anybody that has questions on making movies before we go on? Yes. So, um, you know, when you do assign like big names, um, you know, structure array. Yeah. That that array doesn't have an index. Like a array. Uh, yes, it does. Um, so if you say something like uh, pick names, pick names is the array, right? Right. So if I copy this and I say, whose pick names? 
we see that it's a structured array. It's that big in memory, and it's 15 elements. So, right. but is it indexed like in numbers? Yes, it is. And so you can say um, ggg equals pick names of i dot, oh, sorry. Let's just do like number seven dot name to show you how you can, and that's the seventh one, right? Oh, it reads them alphabetically in the oh, folder, okay? okay. Um, and, and I just want to, uh, to save you trouble. One time I had a bug that took me like two months to find, and what it was is that my folders, my, my files were named image one, image two, image three, up to image 100, but it wasn't image 01, it was image one. And so what it did was it read image zero, and then it read image one, and then it read image one zero, which is image 10. So they didn't come in in, in logical sequence. And I thought that there was a problem with my actual logic of the program. I searched through that logic for two freaking months at Sloan Kettering before I figured out <laughs> it was just reading them in you know, numerically like the computer reads it, which is you know, one, one zero, one zero zero, et cetera. So you always have to name it image zero one, image zero two. If you, if you have more than 100 numbers, you need to name it image 001, image 002, et cetera. So just word to the wise. So other questions about what we've done so far in movie making? Anybody? OK. Oh, yeah, question. You need to use a different codec for Mac, yes. None of the people with Mac computers in this room should be able to see the video. If anybody can on a Mac computer, please tell me. No? Uh, I don't think so. Let's, let's look. Yeah, oh, yeah, see, it, it is, in fact, movie to AVI. No, I don't think so. See, also, video writer. That looks promising. Well... Yeah, video writer. There's an AVI. The answer is I don't know. Hopefully we can give it a shot. It would be nice because I've it's a total pain in the butt. So anyway, um, now we're going to move on to data fitting. Okay. So everybody, create a new MATLAB script. Okay. Oh, uh, it's, every time you run anything, it's automatically <laughs> saved. So you can just create a new one. Actually, when you create a new one, it'll just give you a new script. Right, and you can see all of the scripts up here. If you guys, if, if your, com if your um, command space doesn't look like mine and you don't like it, you can always go to, actually my, my screen is, there's, there's a view format in most screens. Mine is scrunched up so you can't see it. But if you go to the default viewer, it'll, it'll bring it back to looking like mine does right now. But anyway, make a new program. It comes up here. You can always see what you did before because these were all of the other functions that I did or MATLAB scripts that I made. But here we are in our new MATLAB script. So we're going to do as we usually do and give it a name. And the name is going to be data fitter.m. I'm going to say our first two lines, which are clear all and close all. This is, again, you, it's, it's a matter of style. You don't have to put clear all and close all, but I find that if I run things a bunch of times and I change things, I want it to start with fresh memory at the top, or else I'll have one of those hair-pulling moments, which, as you can see, I've had quite a few of. So let's save, Control-S, and we'll call it data fitter. And I want to make sure that I save in the MATLAB course folder, like that, OK? All right, so here we go, embarking on the coolest yet program that we have written. So the first thing we want to do is say global data. Why? 
because later we're going to use data in a different MATLAB file, M different MATLAB script, okay? When you say global, what that does is it means I'm going to make this variable available to any other MATLAB scripts that also have this very same line, global data, on the top. So that's script one, scripts two. If I put on the top of both of them global data, that means that if I say data equals one, two, three here, and I say display data in this script, it will have access to that global data. So we're, that's what we just did, global data. Then we're going to say figure one, <coughs> axis, let's just say one, 100, one, 100. And you're going to say, but Dan, what are we having a figure for? We don't even have any data in there. We are going to get some data, some simulated data, by making this figure. So what we're going to do is say, data equals, what's our command for getting click coordinates? Anybody? G input is right. I don't have any t-shirts to throw out this time, but I'll give you a, a virtual pat on the back. Uh, there we go. Okay. So now, if we hit run, and if, if you, once you start doing this, if you get frustrated, don't hit run a bunch of times. Just hit run once, and you should get, say, okay, change folder, a blank slate where you can click the data. Okay? So if I click 50 and 50, click, and hit enter, well, nothing happened. But if I go here, and I say, what is data, it'll show me the XY coordinate that I clicked, okay? If you just remove that, it'll show it to you. If I run, click, boom, there's my coordinate. I can click any coordinate I want. Oops, sorry, I didn't click anything. Here, I'll click 10, 10. Oh, there's 10, 9. Let's go crazy. Let's click 100, 100. Wild, right? And there it is, okay? Sorry, this is the script for those of you who want to see what I've written so far. Okay, so this is a method just for getting some numbers in there. Um, what we're going to do is make some simulated data and then fit it. But for the time being, let's type in the rest of the code. Only four more lines to go. We want to say, oh, so let me just tell you what the plan is. We're going to click a bunch of data that, is, that looks like a linear trend, y versus x, and then we're going to fit it for a straight line of form M mx plus b, okay? And, that, and this is going to be very simple. We'll be done in five minutes. But then since you will have saved this code, you can apply the same technique to mathematical data of any form you like, exponential, parabolic, whatever. You can also apply it to two-dimensional functions. You'll see it's so, so fantastic. The first day I saw what you're about to see when I was a grad student, I like decided that I just wanted to be a MATLAB person for the rest of my life. So, <laughs> so I'm hoping that you all, you know, get on board. <laughs> okay, so let's at this point say that, give it an initial guess at the data. We'll say m equals 1 and b equals 0. And then we're going to say start equals m and b. Okay, so if I run this now, it's going to ask me to, uh, I should probably, I'll, I'll leave this right here so that maybe you'll be able to see it, right? And if I can click my 60, 65, oh, it didn't show it because I put in this thing here, but it's in there. And now I come back here and, and what is start? Start is my initial guesses at the slope and the intercept of the data, okay? So now what we need to do is create a fit program, okay? So what we're going to do, and this is wild, is we're going to create a new file. Yeah, Greg, what? Um, you clicked one point and it was giving a slope intercept, right? How is it able to get a slope? Oh, no, 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 it's not getting anything yet. It just, it just told you what our initial guesses were. We actually gave it 0 and 1. Okay, so don't even worry about that. But make a new code, okay? And in this new code... 
you're going to make your first function. Okay, functions, cool, right? We're gonna put the func in functions by saying function error equals fit of start. Okay. Now, this program is isolated and won't see any of the data. So what do we have to put as this line here? Global data, right. That's a good, that's a good, that was a tough one. 10 points for Alan. Actually, Bigelow wins. Uh, global data. Okay. And then we're going to say m equals start of 1 and... Oops, let me just undo that. B equals start of two. <laughs> just have to go the other way. <laughs> okay, and now we're gonna say X equals data of everything and one. And what? Oops, damn, I did it again. Dang, I did it again for the home viewers. Or I should, I, or oops, I did it again for Britney Spears, because I know she's out there learning MATLAB too. Okay? So what this is doing is it's saying, well, we have this global, global data, but the data is a, a two by n array where the first column is x and the second column is y. So these two bottom lines are just pulling those columns out and calling them x and y. So at this point, well, I'm gonna, I don't need to display them. We're, we're just, a, just two more important lines to go here. We're going to say the predicted y equals m times x plus, say it, say it loud, b. b is right, straight line, mx plus b, okay? And, and this is the kicker, the error equals the sum of y minus py raised to the 2. And so what this does is it takes the vector y, which is all of the values here, minus the predicted y, which is all of the values that you predict by the linear line, and sums their squared values. Now, I have intentionally left an error on this line, not just the ERR designation, but a, but a, but a screw up on my part. Who can come up with the error that I have left on this line? And you can't just run it because it won't work yet, so you can't cheat. Does anybody, can anybody find what error I have here? Okay, so maybe it was a tough question. We have to put dot squared here. Because you see, it can do the subtraction as an element by element operation on these two matrices, but as soon as you try and square it, it's going to do something really weird unless you do dot squared. So, because so it's like multiplying this matrix by itself, okay? So now we're all done with all the fun stuff, but we just have to do the bookkeeping and make the figure. So, you too. Oh, and we're going to do our CLF. What's that stand for? Clear last, Clear last figure, that's right. We're going to say plot. As a function of x, we'll plot y, and let's do it with black o's. Remember, the plot command, of course you can do help plot in the command window anytime you want to, but the x vector is first, the y vector is second, and then the third thing is what are you going to plot it with? What's your symbol going to be? k means black. RGBCMK are the letters you can use for colors. And O is, means it's going to plot it with O's. You can plot it with asterisks or SQU would be squares. You can get DIA for diamonds. You can go crazy. But let's not go crazy and put hold on here. That's going to enable us to plot other stuff on the same graph. I'm going to copy this line. 
Oops. And I'm going to put it down here. And in, and in, in addition to plotting y, I'm going to pro, plot our predicted y. Okay? But since that's going to be a straight line, I'm going to plot it with lines. Okay? And then I'm just going to put the final command in here. Draw now. Now since I want it to be very readable, I'm going to say marker, face, color. You don't, you don't have to do this. Okay, so it's going to be solid black dots. And since I want this line to be thick, I'm going to say line width three. Okay, so this is the fit program, okay? Has everybody at least typed in all this stuff? Anybody not typed in all this stuff in the fit program? Almost there. Almost there. Okay, but it's still called untitled three, so we're gonna to need to save it. So I save it, and I need to call it fit.m. Ooh, I already have a fit.m in there. Give me, because I wrote it previously. So let me just go back, and I'll just drag this one onto the desktop so we can fit it and be all on the same page. Oh, uh, I'll save, and I'm just going to call it fit. And it'll automatically append the .m on there as I save it. So here I go. I'm in the MATLAB course. This is the same one that <coughs> data fitter is in, and I save it. Oh, fit is already open in MATLAB. This is not going to happen to you. Hopefully. Okay, done. And you can see the path right here. It's in MATLAB course. So I've got data fitter that's in MATLAB course, and I've got fit that's also in MATLAB course. So now, if I go back to data fitter, and I'm just going to show you how this works. Oh, actually, we've, we've already said start is MX plus B, M and B. We need some more lines here. So what we're going to do is just say, oh, we only need one more line. We say results. It could be any name you like, but I use results. Equals, and this is the command, F minimization search. F min search. See that? F min search. That's the command. What would you ever do if you didn't know how this command worked? Help, right. You go to the command window and you type help fmin search. Let's just do it for fun. Yep, there's all, everything you could ever want to know about help fmin, uh, about fmin search. Okay, minimizes a function. It's a least squares minimization. So let's put the variables in there. And, and this is the very last line of code we're going to do today. Fit is the name of your fitting program. You're going to pass it start. And you're going to send it empty options, empty options. So this is what you, you're going to pass it. If you wanted to pass it other things, you could just say start, comma, other things, and then comma, options. But we don't really have any other things we want to pass it. And, then, and these are the options. When there's nothing in that bracket, it means default options. I leave it to you as a homework. The first homework is to find the codex so that it works on a Mac, and then tell me, because I need that. But the second option, or the second uh, homework is to find what the options do, okay? So now we're all ready to run it. I'm going to run it. Okay, so here's where I, try, where I say click, 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 click. Simulated linear function. Oh, and, and the teacher has an error. What do you know? What is the error? Undefined function data. Oh, I have a lowercase d for data over here. So sorry about that. I was hoping it would work the first time, but the other golden rule is it never works the first time, right? So save. We go back here. We hit our play. We simulate some linear data like that. We hit enter. Oh, 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 oh. My goodness. Oh my goodness, it thought on its own. The computer thinks it's alive. All right? This is very cool. This means it fits the data. And at the end, you can say m equals results of 1. I'll just print them out so that we can see it. 
and b is the result of 2. Okay? Let's try it again. Click, 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 enter. Oh, that was an easy one, so it didn't take long. And then, boom, here are the resulting m and b for your fit. Okay? All right. I'm sure that there are many of you for whom this does not work yet. Can you all raise your hand if you don't get it fitting so far? Oh, the biggest number so far. Okay, Justin, go to town. I'll go to town too. I'll eventually. Uh, what should I leave up? Is this, that's all right. Okay. Well, let's see. So if you get an unbalanced error. Oh, this is a bitter. Everybody else, go to your FIT program and make sure you didn't make the same mistake I did by putting a lowercase d on data. X equals capital data, Y equals capital data. So go back to our So it's working for you, you're just not So it's working, but you're not plotting the lines. Oh. Actually you are. It's just not very simple. So
So, um, Okay, I'm late for my next point. Uh, this thing. So I'm late for my next thing. I have to go. So who is? So I just wanted to make one more comment. Let's keep up this thing. I just wanted to make one more comment that this is a very powerful tool that I've given you. It looks simple, but uh, you can actually apply it. You can apply this to any function you want, and. You realize the line that computes the error, remember the error equals the sum of the squared errors between each of the correlating data points, being the measurement and the predicted. You can make that be the error between each of the pixels in a simulated image and a data image. So in other words, you can define your error however you like, and you can define your function however you like. In other words, let's say you have um, Let's say you have uh, uh, an exponential, uh, let's say you have a data function, and it really has to fit well in the beginning, but you don't care too much about the end. You can actually square the error of just the beginning. What I'm saying is you can define the error however you like. So it's a very powerful tool with lots of permutations. And um, it's, it's, it's nice to actually just see the thing think for itself. Sometimes I come in here when I want to demonstrate it, I just put pause and then um, uh, 0 0.2 over here. And I can also put an axis one, 0, 100, 0, 0, 100. Okay, and that'll just, that'll just make it look really cool. So if I save and I run it over here, boom, 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 boom. See, so, it's, so you can see how it actually takes guesses. And this is, this is an iterative algorithm. And so what it's going to do is it's going to uh, fit, I guess that was a little bit too slow. But you see how it's actually thinking. And it's using Newton's method. And so it's like taking a guess, computing the error, adjusting the A and B parameters to take a second guess, and thinking about whether the error got smaller or bigger. And then if it gets smaller, then it keeps on pushing it in that direction. But if it gets bigger, it turns around and, and adjusts the variables in the other direction. So, and then the step sizes will get smaller and smaller as the error gets less until it locks in and you can see it's doing pretty well right now. Okay? So that's your tutorial on data fitting. And so you should go home and fit all the data that you can. Okay? <laughs>